Hello everyone, the topic we covered today meningitis. Meningitis is one of the disease condition under the central nervous system in medical surgical nursing. So let's see what is meningitis. Meningitis it is an infection or inflammation of the meninges. As you know that what is meninges? Meninges it is the membranous layer that cover the brain and spinal cord and also it is one of the uh, layer of tissue that separate the brain and skull. So let's discuss what are the major causes or etiology of the meningitis. The causes of meningitis such as bacterial infection, viral infection, fungal infection, inflammatory diseases, cancer and trauma to brain and spinal cord. These all are the major etiology or causes of the meningitis. So next we will discuss about the pathophysiology of meningitis. The pathophysiology it is due to etiological factors the bacteria enter into the bloodstream and it is leads to uh, enter to the mucosal layer or mucosal cavity and it is leads to the breakdown of the uh, normal barrier. When the breakdown of the normal barrier it leads to the crosses of blood brain barrier and it is leads to proliferation of bacteria in CSF. CSF means cerebrospinal fluid. When the uh, proliferation of the bacteria in CSF that leads to infection and inflammation of the meninges and it leads to the meningitis. That is the pathophysiology of meningitis. So next we will be discuss about the what are the common type of meningitis. So as you know that just now we discussed the etiology mainly caused by bacteria, viral and fungal. So major types we can divide as per the causes bacterial meningitis, viral meningitis, fungal meningitis. So first we can see what is bacterial meningitis. The bacterial meningitis also known as the septic meningitis. It is caused by the bacteria such as mycobacterium tuberculi, streptococcus pneumonia, Neisseria meningitis, Haemophilus influenza. These all are the diseases and causative agent to leads to the bacterial meningitis. The bacterial meningitis is the extremely severe. So here we need the immediate treatment. So second type is the viral meningitis. The viral meningitis is caused by the viruses and it is also known as the aseptic meningitis. The viruses such as enterovirus, adenovirus, varicella, herpes simplex virus, these all are the main causative agent of the viral meningitis. So viral meningitis is the less severe than bacterial meningitis. The third one is the fungal meningitis. The fungal meningitis is the less common than bacterial and viral meningitis. It is the getting the person who have the impaired immune system. They have the high risk of the fungal meningitis. These all are the th uh, three main uh, types of the meningitis. So next we will discuss about the signs and symptoms or clinical manifestation of meningitis. The main signs of meningitis are kerning sign, brudden skin sign, knuckle rigidity, other symptoms such as fever, headache, vomiting, joint pain, photophobia or sensitivity to light. These all are the major other signs of the uh, meningitis. So next we'll see the diagnostic evaluation or investigation of the meningitis. The diagnostic evaluation such as hysterical, physical examination. So under the physical examination, we have to assess the sign of kerning, brudden skin and knuckle rigidity. So how do we assess the kerning sign? Kerning sign, it is a pain or stiffness of the hamstring muscles. So we have to ask the patient or we have to provide the patient in supine position and keep the hip on 90 degree and ask the patient or encourage the patient to elevate the leg. So that time patient feel the pain or stiffness in the hamstring muscle that is the positive sign of the meningitis that is called the kerning sign. The second sign is the brudden skin sign. Under the brudden skin sign we have to assess or demonstrate that we same we have to provide the supine position and keep one hand under the patient head and another hand we have to keep over the patient chest and just flexion or raise the patient head that is the involuntary raise of patient leg or hip 
it is now automatically flexion or uh, elevating or rising that is the positive sign of the Brudenskin sign. Third one is the knuckle rigidity. Knuckle rigidity we have to assess the stiffness of neck. Other investigation we can do CT scan, MRI, blood culture, CSF analysis. These all are the another important or uh, we can do in the investigation of meningitis. So next uh, we will see uh, uh, the complication of meningitis. The complications such as hearing loss, shock, seizure, kidney failure, memory difficulty and death. So next uh, we will discuss about the major part of the uh, condition that is the management. So under the medical management we can see what are the medication we can provide to the patient. So already we studied that it is the bacterial meningitis the extreme severe condition. So for that we can provide the uh, medication such as ampicillin, penicillin, gendamicin, vancomycin, cephalosporin. These all are the antibiotics we can provide to the patient. And patient is in uh, dehydration or shock. We have to uh, treat with the patient in fluid therapy. And the patient have the seizure. So, we seizure we can treat with the uh, phenytoil and barbiturate we can provide and treat the patient. And if suppose if the patient ICP is increasing, ICP is the uh, intracranial pressure is increasing, we can treat with the manitol and uh, dexamethasone. And also other symptoms we know that fever, vomiting, pain and all is there. So that for the fever we can provide the antipyretics. For the pain analgesis we can provide and also uh, we can provide the patient to the uh, antiemetics for the vomiting. So these are the main treatment we can provide. And also second one is the uh, viral meningitis. So viral meningitis we can provide the uh, texofavir we can provide to the patient. Tenofavir it is the important uh, antiviral treatment we can provide to the patient. So next one is the surgical management. Surgical management here we can if the patient is the deafness we can go for the cochlear implantation. After the surgical management next we can discuss about the nursing management. Nursing management here we have to assess the patient and provide comfortable position and give the medication as per the physician order, monitor the vital signs and uh, uh, record it the normal vital signs and if any abnormality if you are finding you can inform to the doctor, provide psychological support to the patient, give the health education to the patient and family members. This all for the management. So hope you all understand what is meningitis. Today we discuss the meningitis. Meningitis it is an infection and inflammation of the meninges. So this all for today classes. This is Nisha signing off till we meet the next video. Bye bye.